Well, I just met our next speaker, and I'm super psyched. I feel like I wish I knew you for 100 years, but I feel like now we're going to know each other for 100 years. Um, she's the Psy Babe. She's the hero the world needs to fight against pseudoscience in the world that seems endlessly shelling it out. She's a chemist, a forensic scientist who fights pseudoscience using social media and humor. And I love her. And I love her name. Please welcome Yvette Dontremont. If I could just get my technology to work for me, we can get going. So where are my atheists at? <laughs> Woo! Where, where are my reptilians at? And if, there are always a few. We're going to hang out later. Where, where are the Trump supporters at? OK, we're a good crowd. We're good to go. So I, my name's Yvette. I'm a Psy Babe. And I made a bit of a name for myself by talking about science with a side of dick jokes. Uh, it's, a, it's a good formula. I like it. Um, but a couple of my big influences in my career are here today. And this is just such a huge honor for me because uh, I'm sharing a stage uh, with, with Pendulette and with Bill Nye. And these were two, yeah, right? Give it up for them. It's, and even as someone who is trained in chemistry and forensics and theater, as you do, uh, my, my big influences were people who taught me that you could teach science uh, by being a snarky, loudmouth asshole, uh, which, is, which is kind of what I am. And they were wonderful influences because they told me you could get out and be yourself and get people to learn and think about the world around you. But I had another influence who isn't here today, um, and her name was Dr. Christine Jaworek Lopes, and unfortunately, she's, she's really not here today. She was my chemistry advisor in college, uh, and I worked for her for three years. Uh, she was really, really bad at telling a joke. There was a time when she told us about the fact that you could treat um, you, could, you could treat ethylene glycol poisoning or antifreeze poisoning by getting rip-roaringly drunk. I thought that was a great story to tell a bunch of 19-year-olds at 8.30 in the morning. And she went with the jazz hands and went, chemistry in action, and crickets. Oh, the poor dear. She said after that she was never going to try telling jokes again. She kept trying and kept falling flat, but we loved her anyway. But she was so much more than her ability, or lack thereof, to tell a joke. She had infinite patience and kindness, which is a good thing in an organic chemistry professor, because it's, it's the thing that makes students cry <laughs> at 8.30 in the morning. Um, when I showed up at college, I was kind of a mess. My parents had just divorced. I was not the confident, uh, very happy to speak in front of a huge crowd woman that you see today. I needed help, and she was the first person who believed in me. I was also pursuing a very strange double major of chemistry and theater, as you do. Um, and she, though a lot of other professors told me, cut this funny theater stuff out. You should be double majoring in chemistry and any fucking other thing. Um, she said, do it, because you need to be a conscientious citizen of the world. She spent her free time going to children's museums and teaching and setting up exhibits for the children to try to do outreach. She brought the students to do this. And she knew that being a scientist who did outreach was important. So she told me to go out and pursue my dreams. But then I lost touch with her for a few years and had my career and then started my silly little Cybabe page and it started to take off when I told people that they were full of shit for, for promoting things like detoxes and cleanses because detoxes aren't a fucking thing. So I like you people. Um, so when I finally, a couple weeks ago, I, wrote, I spoke at Nexus and Bill Nye was there, and I'm finally, I'm in a program with Bill Nye. I went to college saying I was gonna be vet the science dudette. I kind of made it. I was on a, on a program with Bill Nye. I'm like, I got the picture. I could send it to my professor, and I was so excited. And I found her on Facebook, and the first thing I read was her profile picture that was a, a drawing that one of her children had. She'd had children now. She, we'd, we'd been apart for so long. It was a drawing from one of her kids saying, it's not the size of the mom in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the mom, no more cancer. Oh, that stung. I didn't even know what to say. She had stage four colon cancer, diagnosed at age 44. That's about, that's six years before they even start screening. It was, it was diagnosed 15 months ago. 
Uh, she had two children who weren't even in junior high yet. And it went through my head, she's only 45. This can't be happening yet. She has so much left that she wanted to do. She had just so much time that she should have been here. And I also learned from reading her profile that she was Catholic. This is a woman of great rational thought that followed every medical order from her doctors, understood the chemistry of the medication she was on, uh, and, she, and she was religious. She didn't become religious in her dying days. She never said a word about it in class, never, never tried to spread her religion to us, but she was religious. And she wanted two things. She only really, she wasn't asking for much. She asked for two things. One, for people to make donations to the Colon Cancer Alliance. If you can, please make a donation. Please make a donation. Uh, and she asked for prayers. And I didn't suddenly find God. I didn't suddenly stop being an atheist. Um, and I didn't think that saying a few words in my head were going to make, sure, make her have a re miraculous recovery. But as an atheist, I prayed. And it was because of my humanist, my, my humanist values of kindness and fulfilling promises to a mentor that they were stronger than my instinct to be divisive. And I think that's important for us as humanists uh, to also make a donation to the Colon Cancer Alliance. And in that moment of fulfilling a request for, for a mentor, I, 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 I guess I prayed in case anyone's listening, which I don't think there is, that her family will find peace and that all the work she did as a scientist to train future scientists that somebody will find a cure. And I think that's the best I can do because I think that, and because as I prayed, I, I realized we're defined more by what unites us as people than what divides us as religious and non-religious people. And this is something that we keep saying when we're trying to do outreach. Oh, I mean, we're, we're, defi we're, we're defined a little bit more by religious and not religious, but I mean, if you're a Trump supporter, we're, we're a little divided, I'm just saying. But that's the important takeaway, though. As atheists, we're starting to win. We're gaining acceptance. And as atheists are starting to gain acceptance, we're continually trying to inform the public that, you know, we probably don't eat babies most of the time. I'm just saying. It's, you know, things get desperate. Just kidding. Anyways, we tell people that our values are quite similar to theirs, but sometimes we forget that religious people, most of them, their values are similar to ours. It goes both ways. And I understand that my, my secular atheist, uh, my secularist and my atheist, I say this as a proud atheist, I know we beat the drum of reminding people that the world is not 6,000 years old, that climate change is real despite somebody showing up to Congress with a snowball, and that evolution is a goddamn thing. But, and, and that the Bible and other religious books have atrocious mythological stories in them. But remember, a lot of religious people today are with you on those points. And some atheists disagree with you on rational points. Uh, you've all met a really irrational atheist, right? right some hands. We've, we have, oh, we have those friends. Uh, you know the guy who's sure that God isn't real, but that chakras need balancing, and that cleanses are a thing, and that gluten makes your dick fly off. You've all met that guy. You know you've met that guy. I live in LA, I've met all of those guys. But here's the thing, those are just a different kind of irrational that we still need to fight. But the people that we know and love, they're greater than any one of their parts that you might find objectionable. I, I could do another Trump joke here, I'm just saying. But my professor trained a generation of scientists who were working as doctors, cancer researchers, silly little psi babes. Uh, and whether or not her beliefs informed her as being a curious scientist or not, that's not up to me. And that never affected me because all I know is back when nobody else did, never mind her other beliefs, she had belief in me. And that was enough. And it's wonderfully secular and humanist. It's that value that she left to believe in a person when they need it. Because people matter. What you do when you're alive matters. And Dr. J. Lo, who passed away last week, just shy of her 46th birthday, whether or not anything happens that she believed in after death, her actions spoke louder than her beliefs. We are better people for the things that unite us as scientists, thinkers, and our common humanist values than we ever are by dividing ourselves along religious and irreligious lines. We are and always have been defined much more by what unites us as people than divides us. Thank you, Reason Rally.
Keep it going for Yvette. Just drink the cloud cover for a sec, right? That breeze, oh. 